Good morning, everyone. This is Faith of Faith and Books. It is July 4th. Uh, if you're American, happy 4th. Um, and it's a very sticky, it's still cool out, but it's like the humidity is like 98% right now. But I was inspired to just do a little bit of a garden tour because I started reading um, Nature's Best Hope for Sustainability July. And that book inspired me, I guess it was maybe four years ago, to really uh, start uh, planting native plants in my yard. I had sort of done that because about eight years ago um, I, I put in or we had a, a company actually put in a sort of a permaculture garden, the, the beginnings of it, and we did plant some native uh, pollinator supporting plants then. But after reading Doug Ptolemy's book I really got inspired to really try to manage my property better. Um, and so I thought I'd just give you a glimpse of that um, I'll just do the things that are blooming right now um, and just talk a little bit about what I'm trying to do here. There's a bluebird sitting up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Mm. Ah, the bluebird is up there. I don't think my phone can handle something from so far away. Yeah, you can't really see it, can you? Let me take a photo and then enlarge it. Can you see it's right in the middle of the screen there? Okay, so this is a garden that is just into its second year, I think. And I put it at the very front of our yard because what I'm trying to do is reduce the lawn. So our house is set back and we've got this long, narrow lawn. Um, when we first moved here 21 years ago, uh, the people before hadn't really taken care of it. It was full of anthills. Uh, we had so, oh, such a problem with ants when we first moved in. So we did the conventional thing. I think we tr we used a lawn company that said it was natural or something, and it wasn't really. Um, we did that for a while. Then we sort of just neglected it. Um, and now um, and now we're we're actively trying to manage it with with the help of a company. Um, I use a company called Organic Edible Gardens. Um, and they come a few times a year, six times a year, to help um, manage the yard and, and do stuff. <laughs> so uh, we're trying to do a, a natural thing for the yard, but I, I kind of want a meadow. I don't want lawn. We have some turf grass, um, but there's also a lot of clover and violets and dandelions and chickweed and sorrel. Uh, they're all mixed together. Um, but this garden I just put in, I think this is the second year. I think this is the second year, yeah. So let me show you what I got and what's happening here. Let me see if I can walk through this wet grass. <laughs> um, so these are my New England asters and they are not doing so well. They, they really, I don't know. Look at this, something's, there's some kind of disease on that. Now they don't bloom until late summer into the fall. So that's supposed to be my color for that time of year. Um, and I don't know, I don't know what's happening with these. Some of them are getting eaten down. Like what happened to this one? It's completely eaten down. Why was that eaten and not these others? And maybe these others have been really nibbled on by the deer. We have a really bad deer problem. And maybe that's why they got diseased. I'm not sure. Um, oh, people are walking down the street, and here I am talking to myself. This is my uh, thread, what is it, thread something coreopsis, the beautiful yellow flowers. And I love the lacy leaves and then the bright yellow. And they're kind of just past their prime. They were absolutely gorgeous yesterday, but it's been raining a lot. And then over here are winter berries, and they have bright uh, red berries. Right now you can just see the berries emerging. They have bright red berries um, in the winter time and so that kind of provides color and also provides food for birds. And then in the in this row back there, what is that? That is, let me come around. I think that's some kind of a, oh I'm trying, I'm forgetting now. I think this is some kind of a milkweed. Um, or I think it's a swamp, um, might be swamp uh, sunflower. Yeah, that's what it is, swamp sunflower. And that comes later in the summer as well. And here is the purple cone flower. 
And then this is the bee balm in the back here. So one thing I have to learn to do with a native garden, sometimes it really doesn't look so good. And also you have to fill in gaps like right here, there was bee balm and somehow it's gone. So I have to learn how to propagate it. Uh, and I wanna do that. I wanna learn how to propagate this and fill in um, blank places. That also happened with the coneflower. Um, right now it's very early in the morning, so we're not seeing uh, all the pollinators. Um, in, uh, you know, if I come back later, it'll just be full of bees. I'm kind of disappointed because I have not noticed very many butterflies this year, so I'm a little bit um, puzzled by that. Anyway, yeah, here's the ink berry again, you can see. And then, I do not know what this is. Hmm, I have to look this up. Is that the same plant, but it's got darker? I wonder, hmm, I have to look that up. Do I need male and female, maybe? And this is, hmm, I don't know. I have to look that one up. But this is a, just a laurel that was here, that's been here for forever. Um, it's part of our neighbor's yard. So anyway, so this is the lawn. And if you look down, you can see there's violets. I really want a meadow rather than a lawn. And there's a lot of clover. Now clover and uh, dandelions are actually from Europe, but, um, but they've kind of naturalized here. Um, so I'm okay with it. Um, well, I'll show you, I'll show you something we're trying to plant and, um, to try to get it to push out the um, invasive uh, Japanese stilt grass. And that's this grass, which is called buffalo grass. And, or, uh, and it's for the bison. Apparently it's native and bison really like to feed off of, off of that. Here's some more, there's another patch here. So we're trying to get that to grow, to fill in. Oh, here's, here's a little mushroom. So it's really good when you see mushroom. That means that there's a there's a fungi growing in your soil, and that's good for your soil. There's more of this uh, buffalo grass, which I I can confuse with crab grass. I think that's crab grass. And also, let me go over here and show you the Japanese. So this area of the yard is full of this Japanese stilt grass, which I'm trying very hard to get rid of because it's incredibly invasive. And um, I've read that it can take over an ecosystem in five years if you don't fight it. And last year it was horrible, but we have been fighting it. Um, we've been mowing this area low. And anytime I see it, I pull it out or, or we, um, we just uh, weed whack it very low so that it can't ever seed. The seeds live in the soil for years, and anytime you disturb the soil, it, 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 it starts to grow. It's very, very aggressive and fast. Here's a little patch of um, butterfly weed, which smells wonderful. It's got a very sweet smell to it, so it's kind of nice to have it by the front door. And you come out and you smell this lovely smell. And there's lots of bees um, buzzing around here. Not right now, because it's early in the morning and it's da very damp. Um, and wet but um, but this is a, a nice area and I did see a butterfly here and where are all my butterflies I'm, I'm, I'm you know putting up all these uh, pollinating pollinator plants and I'm not seeing the butterflies um, so maybe I'm just not out here enough um, at the right time I'm not sure but anyway I do like this little kind of wild patch um, in the early spring this has uh, daffodils and tulips but then as summer comes on, um, it becomes just sort of this wild patch of um, butterfly weed. And I will say that when you native garden, um, unfortunately you do go through periods where it just doesn't look that great. Um, not that I'm good at that anyway. I'm trying to fill it in. I'm trying to make this some more, um, you know, that where there's always some kind of color, some kind of bloom going. Um, and you know it doesn't look um you know like it's it's been neglected or something that that's what tends to happen it doesn't have that formal look 
when you landscape with like the uh, plants that are from other countries. Um, and so that is something that I'm, I'm just learning. I'm just learning, this is my second year. So I'm just learning how to this do all this. This area of the yard, um, this is just kind of a deliberately wild area. Um, I have this uh, speed well, there goes a bird. Um, we are trying to grow some apples um, and blueberries, which the deer have all eaten. But we have a speed well that supports pollinators. We have more of the um, swamp sunflower that I'll show you later in the summer um, when that starts to really bloom. But we have the swamp milkweed too, and it gets really tall. Um, and, you know, I should be seeing lots of butterflies. Last year we saw, um, you know, cocoons or chrysalises on, on our, actually on the side of the house. But I'm not seeing that yet this year. So I don't know quite what's going on. This is a really wild looking area. There's some uh, New Jersey ferns back there. This, this part uh, doesn't get a whole lot of sun at all. Um, it gets a little bit in the morning and then... Um, and then hardly any after that. Um, this is a pawpaw tree. That's a native fruit-bearing plant. And there's another pawpaw tree right there. Um, and these are our blueberries, which are native. And they have been eaten down severely by the deer. We have a lot of deer, like I said before. And we have some cherry that we're trying to grow too. And um, over here, this I did not plant, but I'm just experimenting to see how it will go. Um, this is goldenrod. I think it's wrinkle leaf goldenrod, and it just showed up. I think it was in the mulch. And this is a big patch, and then there's another big patch in the, in the fenced-in part of the yard near the vegetable beds. Um, so we'll see. That's going to bloom in late summer as well. So that'll give it some color then. And then here's my yarrow. Sometimes yarrow is white, but this yarrow is, it starts out kind of white, but then it turns yellow and sometimes even almost like a marigold orange. Um, and I don't know, that might have to do with, you know, the, the uh, pH balance in my soil, maybe. Um, yeah, there's some more yarrow. So that's a nice herb to have. And let's see, oh, and this is my um, comfrey. Which I really love. Um, these big leaves. Such a beautiful plant. So, so I think that that's all I can show you right now. This is uh, probably getting too long. <laughs> um, and it's buggy out here. Getting a little buggy. Um, but yeah, so all this was inspired because before this was just grass. Um, so, uh, what, oh, this big garden is a big garden with fruit trees and bushes and uh, lots of pollinating pollinator supporting plants and this was all inspired by that Doug Ptolemy book 